number 20, I talked about some fundamental concepts when it comes to train movements and signaling. In a nutshell, safety is achieved by separation of movement authorization and movement execution. The goal is to make sure that only one train can be at the same time in any given section of the route network. Of course, these safety measures to properly separate trains have their toll when it comes to track throughput and efficiency. So, today we are going to discuss methods developed over the years by the railroad industry to increase efficiency while maintaining traffic safety. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use IoT components to control a model railroad layout. Let's get started! I ended video number 20 with an animated example of a train move from station A to station B as it was common on routes with not so heavy traffic about 50 or 60 years ago. The move was announced and agreed between the two stations, the home signals set and the train dispatched. After arrival, the signals were set back. A simple move following the principles of authorization and execution as outlined in the last video. With increasing demand for transportation, this system soon came to its limits. And of course, the simplest way to increase capacity was double tracking, which really is the foundation for increasing throughput if there is traffic in both directions. With two operational tracks, traffic follows the same rules as before but now there is a separate track dedicated to each direction. As a result, two train movements in opposite direction can take place simultaneously and the sequence to initiate and control traffic is the same as before, just individual for each direction and independent of each other. So the question became, how could this be further improved without compromising on safety? The answer to this was breaking down the main track between the stations into blocks, of which each could hold a train. So the next train would not have to wait until the previous train arrived at the next station, but could start moving as soon as the block in front of it was free. Each block could be secured by a signal that would regulate entrance into the block or prevent entrance of a new train if the block was not free or the distance to the previous train too short. And the good news was that those signals could be completely automated. That was the invention of the automated block system, known as ABS. It is essentially a fully automated system to ensure train safety between the home signals of two interlocking plants by regulating the speed and therefore the distance between trains going in the same direction. Interesting to note that ABS originally was only intended for tracks with unidirectional traffic and thus originally did not provide safety against trains going in the other direction. In fact, in a pure ABS area, typically there are no signals installed going into the other direction on the same track. Also with ABS, the basic principles of train control remain in place. But in the regular direction, the travel permission can be somewhat automated and communicated using the home signals. And with that, several trains can travel between the two stations at the same time, in the same direction, just in different blocks, which leads to the desired increase of efficiency of the track section. Assuming a train length of 2 miles, a block length of 2 miles, and a travel speed of 60 miles an hour, the total time a train occupies a block is about 4 minutes, which would lead to a theoretical maximum of 15 trains per hour. Commuter trail systems with shorter blocks and lighter trains can indeed handle that many trains per hour. Realistic and achievable numbers for heavy freight train traffic is more in the area of 4 to 6 trains per hour, which is already a significant improvement over the single tracking capacity. Now the question became how to apply the ABS system to a single track where trains can travel in either direction. An ABS for single track would have benefits in situations where more than one train is immediately following each other in the same direction. If the train direction needed to be changed, 
then there is no higher efficiency compared to a system without blocks because the ABS section needs to be emptied out first before a train can travel in the other direction. A single track ABS could be achieved by mounting signal heads pointing in both directions, thus preventing trains to enter an occupied block from both sides. This is sufficient for trains following each other just as before, but for opposing trains there must be an additional block length safety zone to allow the oncoming train to slow down. With that system in place, if two trains would leave opposite interlocking plans, they would slow down and stop somewhere in the middle of the ABS section as they each would face the halt signal of the other train. Safety would be guaranteed, but this situation would be a big mess anyway. To deal with that situation, the so-called tumble-down system was developed. As soon as a train enters the first automated section, it would cause all opposing signals to show halt all the way to the next interlocking plant. Behind the train, the signals would clear up as before, so that it is possible to send a second train with a one or two block safety distance. This system is known as Automated Permissive Block System or APB and it is probably the most common signaling system for single track areas. So ABS and APB are the signaling systems used on most mainline tracks in the US. And these are normally also the type of systems we model railroaders have in mind when we say we want to have a signaling system on the layout. However, that does not mean that ABS and the APB is the end of the development. In fact, even though the number of trains per hour has been greatly improved, there is still some inefficiency to be improved. The main problem is that the block length is constant, in most cases approximately 2 miles. Constant block length leads to constant minimum distance between trains even though some lighter or shorter trains may be more agile and therefore could be safely operated with a shorter safety distance to the train in front of them. So the next improvement is to make the block length variable, so that every train could have an individual block length to protect it, depending on the characteristics of the train. This in fact makes the blocks moving, so the talk is about a moving block system. Another common term is CBTC, standing for Communication Based Train Control. A similar system is also defined in the ETCS Level 3 standard, the European Train Control System. The core of the system is a precise localization of the train at any time, a centralized calculation of the allowed speed based on the current position of the train in front of it, and real-time communication of the calculated speed and display in the engineer's overhead display. Here are some sequences from a video explaining the CBTC as it is implemented in the New York subway system. The link to the full video is in the description of this video. But a more modern technology, known as Communications-Based Train Control, or CBTC, makes it possible to shorten the space between trains without increasing risk. A train's location is determined using devices along the tracks and on board. This information is transmitted wirelessly to a centralized control facility, which coordinates all train movements throughout the system. Unlike today, the buffer that ensures safe spacing between trains is no longer fixed. Instead, CBTC establishes safe separation by creating a moving buffer, responsive to a train's speed and surroundings. What does CBTC mean for the millions of daily riders on New York City's subway? CBTC uses existing track space more efficiently, safely reducing the space between trains and making room for additional service. The system can adjust train speeds to prevent bunching and recover from delays, resulting in a smoother ride and conserving energy. Trains can operate in both directions on all tracks safely creating greater flexibility to maneuver around work crews and respond to emergencies. Since the trains are all controlled centrally, service can be adjusted quickly along a single line. CBTC would provide subway riders with better real-time information, allowing for more countdown clocks and better customer applications. Moving block signaling has been around since about 1995 or so. 
I saw it the first time 1998 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, where it was implemented in a new line for Putra, the city's metro system. In the US, many metro transport systems and airport shuttles are equipped like this, but to my knowledge it is not in use in any of the transcontinental freight lines. Maybe a viewer of this video knows more and can share his knowledge in the comment section below. Hans here from the future. Unfortunately this last statement was false or at least incomplete. As I did some research for the next video, I came across the current implementation status of the PTC, the Positive Train Control System, which is the nationwide implementation of a CBTC-like system in the US and comparable to the ETCS Level 3 standard. According to the 2018 report, all major Class 1 railroads in the US are pretty much done with the installation of the necessary hardware on track and locomotives, as well as with the training of their employees. A statement from Amtrak, who claims to be the forerunner in PTC implementation, shows that about 85% of the entire network is operated now under PTC rules. And while I have not seen clear information that PTC at this point in time implements moving blocks, it has all the ingredients operational that such a system needs, mainly trackside data collection, direct train communication and central operation monitoring and control. I have added several links in the description of this video with more information about the system and its current implementation level. So much about signaling principles and systems, but what about CTC, Centralized Traffic Control? As the name says, this does not have to do much with signaling, but more with movement authorization. Instead of two yardmasters of neighboring interlocking plants negotiating the sequence of trains between their plants, the authorization function is delegated to a centralized control station, where all trains within a network or part of it are supervised, co coordinated and controlled. So CTC does not change anything in the principle how trains move or are authorized, but it reassigns the responsibility for the authorization of it to a central organization. In the US there are basically three large CTC locations handling most of the heavy traffic main lines. They are located in Omaha, Nebraska, Fort Worth, Texas and Jacksonville, Florida. So what does all this mean for model railroading? Well, I don't know what it means for you, but for me I would see the following requirements when it comes to signaling and CTC. I'm looking for a simple way to equip tracks between interlocking plants or train stations with signals that work according to the rules. I would like to be able to configure the rule set the track is operated under, either single direction ABS, single track ABS or APB. I want to be able to operate interlocking plants either as local authority, for example a yardmaster, or using a CTC scheme. And I am not interested in modeling a moving block system as I want to have visible signals on the layout. And as mentioned before, the idea, the idea is to make this a functionality of the CTC panel software so that no PC software is required for the operation of the system. So the next step is to investigate what it takes from a software conceptualization point of view to make this happen. What are the data structures and algorithms that allow for that functionality? We will find out in the next video. As always, I hope the information in this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support as well as any feedback in the comments section below. Also, check out the additional information provided in the description below. If you don't want to miss any future IOTT videos, click the bell icon and you will get a notification when the video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you next time!